Okay, so first, a uh, warm welcome to all the participants on today's webinar about order tracking. My name is Erne Sierk. I am DSA application engineer in Devesoft. So the plan for today's webinar is to present you why we need order tracking, how to set it, and how to use it. So the presentation with a live demo will take around 30 minutes. And then at the end, we will have 10 minutes for your questions. So for the presentation, I have uh, muted your microphones. So please um, spare your questions for, for the end of the presentation. OK, so um, let's start with some basic description of the application. The order tracking is a perfect tool to determine the operating conditions of the rotating machines, like resonances, stable operating points, determining the cost of, of vibrations. It's extremely powerful in combination with other math modules, like torsional, combustion, or power analysis. We use the order tracking method to extract the harmonic components related to the rotational frequency of the machine. And we do that by transforming a measured signal from the time domain to angular or order domain. With that order extraction, we can see a specific harmonic component which relates to a certain machine fold. So the first harmonic usually relates to unbalance of the machine. The second harmonic often relates to eccentricity. So if we have, for example, a nine rotor blade, the ninth harmonic relates to the errors on the blades. Uh, if we have, for example, 31 teeth on a gear, then the 31st harmonic will show the gear mesh frequency. To perform the order tracking, we need to measure vibrations of the machine and the rotational frequency. Depending on what we want to analyze, acceleration sensors or microphones are connected to analog inputs to measure sound and vibration. If they are voltage or ICP type, they are connected to Sirius ACC module or uh, DEV43 with a DSI adapter. So uh, the angle sensor can be connected to the counter amplifier and here we have various possibilities. So you can use either an encoder with individual pulse count. We can use a tape sensor with black and white stripe strips, a simple Tahoe with one pulse per revolution, or a gear tooth, so like 60 minus two wheel sensor. Before I start explaining all different options of the setup, let's check at first why we need order tracking module. So to do that, I have here a Viber kit, which is a simple uh, demo device. In the middle, there is a engine, and I have two encoders on both sides. And in addition to that, I glued my accelerometer on top of the Viber kit to measure vibrations. My accelerometer, is connected to the Sirius ACC amplifier, um, which has a dual core technology, which is a unique thing in Devesoft. So we have two 24-bit AD converters, each taking care of, uh, of the signal with different range. So if we have a signal with a small range, one AD converter takes care of that. So in, for example, here in the picture in the gray color, and if we have a signal with a high range, the other AD converter takes care of that. So that is very useful um, with some explosions so that we don't lose the data. With that, we can achieve a 160 dB dynamic range in time and frequency domain. The other thing is to measure the vibrations, uh, sorry, the angle. We can measure angle very exact 
with our super counters. So what does super counter mean? That we have a internal time base of 102.4 megahertz, which measures the exact time of rising edge of the signal with an additional counter. To show you in practice how this looks like, so I have a encoder with 360 pulses per revolution connected to my uh, Sirius. And if I go to measure and I rotate the machine, So I will display at first the row counts. Just say, okay. If I only take a look at the row counts from the encoder, I can see a step for each pulse. And then I have an angle, which is much more smoother curve, and I can extract also intermediate values with this additional counter. So let's take a look at why do we need order tracking at all. So as I mentioned before, I have the accelerometer connected to my uh, ACC amplifier, and I will add a simple FFP analyzer. The input will be my vibration, my vibrations, and then just a simple FFT with the resolution of 1.2 hertz. When I go to measure mode and I run the machine, I can observe the frequency spectrum of my vibrations. In addition to that, I will also display um, the RPMs of the machine, which are measured with the microphone. So let's switch here to RPMs. So now my machine is running at 1,300 RPMs. And if I add a couple of markers here. I can see that the first uh, harmonic now is the highest one at 21 hertz, which is consistent with our measured RPMs. Now let's take a look what happens when I uh, increase the RPMs. You can see that also my frequency spectrum changes. So the first harmonic uh, slides in the frequency domain, and then I have different harmonics that, that appear or disappear in my run-up. So that is the basic idea of order tracking, to track the frequency spectrum in relationship with the RPM. Okay, now we will add the order tracking. So this can be added here under plugins. It's very easy to add the order tracking. The first thing is to select the input channel. In this example, this is my acceler acceleration channel. If I have, for example, multiple inputs, I can also select all of them. So I can perform order tracking on multiple vibration channels at the same time. The second thing is to define the frequency source of my machine. I can use counters. In my example, I will use an encoder with 360 pulses. I can also use analog pulses. So for example, if I have an angle sensor connected to analog channel and not to counter channel, I can easily define here the sensor type. Or I can use the RPM channel. So that means that I can use uh, the channel from any kind of plugin or math in Devesoft, and I can use it as RPM channel in order tracking. The only condition is that this channel has units in Hertz or RPMs. 
So in my example, I have an encoder with 360 passes per revolution connected to my counter number two. This is a filter that is a very simple filter. It's, it the, just checks the width of the pulse of the angle sensor. So if the if the pulse is narrower than in my example 500 nanoseconds, then this will not be taken into account. And if it's above 500 nanoseconds, then it's taken into account. So as I showed you before, the order tracking only makes sense if the RPMs of the machine are changing. So that means that we need to perform a full sweep uh, through the RPMs. And we can do the calculation in run-up direction. So that means that the calculation will be done only when the RPMs are growing. Close down, that means that our, uh, the calculations will be done when the RPMs are falling down or in both directions. The next step is to define the lower and the RP, upper RPM limit. So that means with these limits, we define the borders on our, our 3D waterfall that we will also see later. So I will go from zero to 4,000 RPMs. And one very important parameter here, here is delta RPM. That means the delta RPM will define our calculation window. So for each 50 RPMs, a new FFT will be calculated. Okay, so whenever um, my RPMs will change for the value of 50, I will get the new FFT. So that basically somehow defines the resolution. So if we have a slower change in RPMs, then I suggest taking smaller delta RPMs, or if we have really high run-ups and close downs, really uh, fast run-ups, then I suggest taking higher delta RPM because the RPMs will be changing really fast. On the left side of the setup, um, we select if we want to display the order domain harmonics, if we want to display the order waterfall versus RPM, and we can define the order resolution here. So if we want to have the order resolution of 0 0.1, one to five, that means that um, one eighth of the order, we will need at least eight full cycles to determine um, one order. And then we can also display, uh, we want, we select our maximum order. And we can also display the order waterfall versus time. And this graph will show us how the orders are changing with time. In the middle here, we define which harmonics we want to extract. We can do that before the measurement or we can do that after the measurement. It does not matter because everything I'm doing here before the measurement, I can also do it in analyze mode when all the data are collected. So let's add here number two. So I will extract the first and second harmonic. The next step is to um, select the FFT window, standard FFT window, and then we have uh, data averaging. So to explain data averaging, I can show you this graph. So if we select none, this means that the center of the class is taken. So that means that there is no averaging. So if, for example, we have run-ups like this, and one class is between 125 and 175 RPM. If none of the averaging is selected, we will take the FFT in the middle of the class. So at around 150 RPM. But if we select the average between classes, then we will make average in this class. And this will be the FFT that will be displayed. We can also define the update criteria. This is helpful when we have multiple run-ups and close downs in a single data file. So if we have always, that means that 
every time I will go, I will reach a certain RPM, the result will be updated. If I select only first time, only the first run up and the close down will be taken into account and all the others will not be important. If I select the average, I will make an average at the specific RPM through all the run-ups and close downs. If I have really fast run-up and close down, I can select skip missing RPM class. So that will uh, skip the RPM class where there will be no information. On the right side, I can select the time domain harmonics. It again relates to this harmonic list. I can um, show on the 3D graph the FFT waterfall versus RPM, and I can define the resolution here. And here is one important thing. So if I if I have a changing RPM fast changing RPM, I can op update on my RPM change. So in this example, in this case, my delta RPM is the important parameter when to take the new FFT. But if we have really slowly changing RPMs, I can also update on a certain time. And the last parameter is uh, overall RMS versus RPM. Okay, so now I suggest we go to measure. When we go to measure, we can see that order tracking already um, has a predefined screen. It's auto-generated with some typical order tracking graphs. So let's store the data. Okay, and now I will go with the RPMs from zero to 4,000. Okay, the measurement is done. I will stop, go to analyze. And now I can perform all the recalculation here. So for example, I want to see the order waterfall up to 10th order. I can select the type. So now it's linear. I can see that the first order is really the strongest one here. So that means that I have a strong unbalance of my machine. I can also change this to logarithmic to see also the other orders. I can also change the color of my graph. If we have for if we for example measure with the microphone, I can select the sound dB and it will automatically um, turn into the dB level. And now if I take a look at my 2D graph, these are my extracted orders. So it's order number one and order number two. And what, what does it mean? So if I change the projection here, it is similar to the slice of the order. So if you take a look at this curve here, this is my extracted order. Let's say I want to also see the third order. It's very simple to go back into the setup, type in three, go into review, recalculate, and display here also the third order, or all three in the same time. The orders are complex channels, so we can also see the face of the orders, which is an important parameter. On the 3D graph, we can um, change the view type, so we can display only the lines in X or Y direction.
Okay, so now with the with the extracted orders, we made a cut in x direction. And let's say we want to make a cut also in different direction. So this is a very simple procedure. Just go to design, right click on the 3D graph, select the info channels, and select the X and Y cut. So these channels will be displayed on the 2D graph. And I select here. So this will be my X cut. And all I need to do is tell the program where to take the cut. So I took a cut now in X direction, and you can see that my first order is really the strongest one in my spectrum. You can also display this in different visual controls, for example, Campbell diagram. The only difference is that in a regular 3D graph, we have an amplitude that is connected with the color. And in Campbell diagram, the amplitude is connected with the size of the circle and the color of the circles. If we have two or uh, more sensors, we can also display the visualization of the movement. So we can use the orbit graph uh, visual control. And here we define the orientation of the sensors. And we will see how, the, how our shaft is moving. After we have done an analysis, we can also export the data. So we can select which channels we want to export. You can select one of many supported formats or you can just print the screen for some report so as i mentioned before um, the first order is usually connected with the unbalance of the machine so if we imagine a rotating part that has a higher weight on one side so for example this orange part here and you can imagine that this weight will rotate exactly um, one time per revolution. So that means that the first order is connected with my unbalance because the high amplitudes of the first order are created from this weight. The second and third order are usually connected uh, with the misalignment of, of the device. And also, in diesel or gasoline engines, you, we can observe that second, third, or sixth order are almost always dominant. It depends on the cylinder count of the engine. So if we take a look at the four-cylinder, four-stroke engine, so we have one cylinder that is fired every two revolution. So that would get one half of the order vibration if we would have a one-cylinder engine because we have four cylinder engine that are firing all or four cylinders. And this is distributed over four revolution. So that means that this will lead to the high second order vibration. Similar to six cylinder, four stroke engine, it will produce high third order vibration. So one practical example of how we can interpret the data that are coming from the order analysis. So to sum up uh, all the advantages from Devesop, we can uh, have time, frequency, and order domain data at the same time. This is possible due to high sampling uh, and advanced alias-free resampling mechanism. The data is available in all, all three domains, and it's perfectly synchronized uh, together. Then we have English sensor support, so all kinds of sensors are supported from Tahoe, encoder, gear tooth, gear tooth with missing teeth, tape sensor.
and so on. And we have rich visualization and advanced math is possible. All additional information can be found on Pro Training. So please take a look at our web page and visit our Pro Training. If you have any uh, additional question or support, support please uh, write an email to me and we will um, we can discuss 